Your Massachusetts real estate market update for September 26, 2022. So this week, we're going to talk about the interest rates. At this point, it's just become a bloodbath. As always, we're going to take a look at single family and condo weekly uh, inventory and sales numbers. We're also going to take a look at it. Wait a minute. Mortgage applications were actually up? Yeah, we're going to take a look at that and dig into that a little bit more. And then we're going to take a look at a newly listed home on its own peninsula looking out at Chubb Island and the Atlantic Ocean, Chubb Island is obviously most important. But first, let's turn to that weekly single family data. Now in the single family market, we had 5,406 single family homes currently on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This moves us to a three week streak of inventory gains in the state of Massachusetts. Now, the rates of increasing has decreased, if you will, as we saw 73 additional units come on, uh, stay on the market this week compared to last week where it was 181 additional uh, inventory growth. We had 1,136 newly listed single families in the state of Massachusetts. Now, the average amount of new listings that came on the market in July and August were 1,110 units. So this 1,136 is just slightly above that average. So, you know, we're right there in our averages. We had 1,060 single family homes go under agreement this week. Um, now the four week rolling average for single family homes that have gone under agreement is 1,017. So again, we're right there with our averages. This is kind of the new normal, if I'm allowed to use that term. We saw 718 single family homes close this week for an average sale price of $660,000 and a median sales price of $550,000. And that months of inventory, months of inventory from zero to five months is considered a seller's market. Ultimately, it's just a gauge of how hot is that market. Our months of inventory for the week, um, it creeped up to 1.35 months versus last week's of 1.33 months. Now here's something interesting that I did. So months of inventory generally looks at the last four months worth of data. I decided to just take a look at it and skim off the last two months because, well, four months ago isn't really a true indication of what our market currently is. That's where the last two months really is. So, you know, that July and August data, if you will. And what I found is if you take the July and August numbers, then that increases our months of inventory to 2.88 months. Whether it's 1.35 months or 2.88 months, it is still a very strong seller's market for sellers, still a great market. However, I gotta say there are some huge buying opportunities for buyers out there because there are some sellers who had their house, put it on the market, maybe went under contract with another house thinking that, hey, their house is gonna sell right away and they're kind of sitting there in a precarious situation and they just need you, the buyer, in order to come and buy that house and they're willing to sell it at a pretty, pretty good penny. By the way, don't be that guy, hit subscribe. So in the condo market, we currently have 2,787 condos on the market. Now this is a 36 unit gain when we compare it to last week. Inventories continue to gain, it's continuing to gain in the condo market, but very, very, very slowly. We're still below uh, last year's uh, high peak numbers, which was hit actually, I believe this week. There were 613 newly listed condos that came on the market in the state of Massachusetts. Now the average amount of condos listed in both July and August was 423. So ultimately we've seen a 45% increase in the amount of new listings that have come on the market when we kind of look at that last two month rolling average. We saw 453 condos go under a agreement in the state of Massachusetts. Now, again, that July and August number was 409. So, you know, ultimately it's about an 11% increase uh, our, our under agreements this week compared to when we look at it in that rolling average of July and August. We had 228 condos sell uh, last week for an average sales price of $589,000 and a median sales price of $470,000. So that months of inventory, that months of inventory actually increased increase to 1.91 months versus last week's of 1.83 months. I did the same thing rather than the four months, which is that 1.91. I then made it just two months of uh, sales data right there. And believe it or not, our months of inventory in the Massachusetts market actually ballooned to 4.12 months. So this is actually getting on the line where ultimately a seller's market zero to five months, right? And, and an equal market is five to seven months. So we're, we're kind of getting close to that equal market territory for the Massachusetts condo market. 
when we use the last two months, which really isn't what we're supposed to do when we talk about, talk about this data metric. But my whole goal here is to find the trends before everybody else is talking about it, which is why sometimes you have to look at data in a different way. By the way, are you interested in the top 10 markets that could possibly see price decreases if we were to see the real estate market really slow down? Well, if so, I have created a video that I am going to be releasing this week that goes over my top 10 areas in the state of Massachusetts that most likely, if we're going to see a slowdown, will most likely see price decreases. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button because like I said, it's coming this week, hopefully. I'm going to have it released on Friday. So jump into that mortgage market. Last week, we were at 14-year highs for interest rates. Okay. This week, we're at 20-year highs for interest rates. That's what interest rates have been doing. They're just continuing to go up and up. At this point, we're kind of looking towards the high sixes as to where we are. Now, look, what's going on? Why is this happening? Ultimately, there's a lot of instability in the marketplace right now. There's a lot going on over in Europe. I mean, geez, Europe, God, we're just lucky not to be in Europe. It's going to be a really, really, really tough winter for those people. God bless those individuals. But, you know, the market is being negatively affected. Go take a look at the stock market for the last week or two. I mean, it's just been, no matter where you look, it's really, quite frankly, been a bloodbath, which is ultimately what you're seeing in the mortgage market as well. Um, and my question is, is it really still considered volatility if it's just continuing to go one way, right, which is up and up and up? My hope is, is that we're going to start seeing some leveling off of interest rates. I truly believe the error of free money is kind of gone. This is going to be more of the new normal. We're going to have to start paying some relative interest on our larger assets, on our purchases. But the good news is, is we are going to actually get something for our savings when you put it in your savings accounts. Now, there's a lot of data that comes out this week in regards to our economy. It's nothing as big as the Fed chairman uh, increasing the benchmark rate. But when you add it all up, it becomes relatively big. So we have the consumer confidence index. We have new home sales that's coming out. We have pending home sales data that's coming out. Initial jobless claims. We have real consumer spending as well as real disposable income. All metrics that are coming out. And quite frankly, you know, we need to see some weakness here in all of these numbers. We see some weakness here, then maybe the Fed can take their foot off the gas. Well, at this point, it's not the gas. They can take the foot off of our neck of American citizens and stop increasing the interest rates. We need to start seeing this economy slow down. So that way they just stop attacking the interest rates and continue to make them go up and up and up. And as I said last week, yes, rates, they have gone up, but buyers today have more buying power in the marketplace. They're able to dictate their terms. They're able to get home inspections. If you're a buyer and you were putting 3%, 3.5% down six to nine months ago, there was pretty much little opportunity for you to buy a house. Today, you can actually buy that house. And by the way, there's a great saying out there. It says, date the rate, marry the house. And that's exactly what you can do. You can find the house in today's dollars. You can be locked in at an interest rate that you know, you know your payment isn't going to go up like it could in a rental where, you know, well, right now we're seeing landlords just jack up rentals, right? And if interest rates do happen to go down, then you can, well, you can date the rate, like I said, and you can actually refinance. You can break up with your current interest rate and go to that more attractive interest rate. So mortgage demand increased? Yeah, take a look at this article. It increased for the first time in the last six weeks. But a big part of that is that refinances actually rose by 10%. Now they're still an 80, they're 83% below where they were this time last year, which, hey, look, that at that time the writing was really on the wall. That's when most people should have been refinancing. I know I did in August of last year, right? So yeah, refinances, they're up. Most likely you're seeing people like, Oh my gosh, you're an adjustable rate mortgage. They were trying to try trying to play the market a little bit, and then they just realized it's only going to get worse and worse, which most likely it ultimately is. We're going to continue to see interest rates go up here, at least for the short term. Uh, in the mortgage market, uh, purchase applications increased by one percent. 
um, and they were down 30% when we look at purchase applications at the same time last year. And, and on that sense, let's just keep in mind, right, that that was one of the hottest years on record ever. So whenever we're looking at and we're comparing our sales data to from this year to last year, I mean, that's kind of like comparing my Chevy to a Ferrari, right? It, it, it just doesn't really make a, a whole lot of sense. Now, again, there, I know I mentioned this before, but there is some silver linings with these increasing interest rates. That 3.5% buyer, they're able to get a house. And I also kind of touched on this earlier that there are sellers out there who need to sell and are willing to sell their house at pretty large discounts. I mean, I recently had one buyer. So we looked at a house probably a month, month and a half ago when it was newly listed and came on the market. You know, the sellers were feeling all good about themselves. Like, yeah, we're definitely going to get this number. Probably not really willing to negotiate that much. About a week and a half ago, they had a really minuscule $25,000 price reduction. They need a lot more than that in order to move the needle. But ultimately, I reached out to the agent and was like, hey, so like, are these guys really negotiable? Are they really to go? She mentioned three times in an email, just bring me an offer. They need to sell. I mean, and this is what you're seeing out there in the marketplace. These are people that needed to sell, overpriced their house, didn't look at the market dynamics, which is why data like this is so important, whether you're interested in buying or selling that's why it's so important to know your data right and they put their house on the market they were asking for way too much and over time the markets actually continued to move away from them so ultimately if they had priced their house right at that time they probably would have sold it but they overpriced it now they're going to have to go considerably lower than where they could have sold it just about two months ago and that, that term is called chasing down the market right and pricing it's just more important than ever if you're on the seller side and you can really see it in that specific case. But if you're on the buyer side and if you're selective out there, especially for houses that have been on the market for 60 you know, days, 60, 90 days, 100 days, right? Most likely these sellers are feeling a little pain and you might be able to get a really, really good deal on that. And now let's take a look at one of the most expensive houses in the state of Massachusetts. It's a new listing, so check this place out. It's on 4.4 acres and it's nestled on its own peninsula and did i mention that it looks out to chubb island i mean what an awesome name for an island and it's obviously worth every single penny if that's the case it's a total of six bedrooms and six and a half baths and that's in the main house and then there's an additional two bedrooms and two and a half baths in the guest house which is literally right on the water it's a pretty awesome spot it spans 16,390 square feet and it's a very unique oceanfront retreat did you see the indoor pool how about the outdoor pool and the rooftop terrace holy moly and no estate is obviously complete without its own life-size chessboard which they've got plus it has a deep water dock and small sandy beach to top it all off and the seller's asking price is a mere 25 million dollars and did i mention it looks out to chubb island so it's a very 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 good bargain i actually have a link in the description below if you just want to have some fun and take a look at it if that if you have any questions or comments about this video the data uh please throw them in below i always answer everybody you know you take the time to watch the video i'm always going to take the time to answer your questions and and, and your comments uh if you want to talk about your own personal real estate needs then please reach out to me i'd love to chat with you real estate it's a passion of mine. This is what I love to do. I love talking about real estate. Um, I also am really started to be a little bit more selective in the sense of I can't work with everybody that's been reaching out to me. So I have been kind of creating a list, if you will, of people that I'm working with. So if you're looking to buy in the next six months and you're thinking, hey, you want to use me, I am more than honored. I'd love to chat with you. So ultimately, I can kind of get you on that waiting list as I as I work through some clients and we go out and you know we make their dreams happen. Don't be that guy. Hit subscribe. And can you do me a huge favor? Uh, can you please share this video with friends, family members, anyone who's thinking about buying ultimately the largest and most probably most important asset of their life? Uh, an educated client, an educated person is a powerful person. And it's more important than ever for people to be educated on the real estate market and really all financial markets as we've seen some turmoil in pretty much every single asset class. I'm Jeff Chubb. Until next time.